good morning, everybody. How are you all? I hope you're great. Happy Monday. Now listen, today's high temperature is supposed to be 34 degrees. It's currently 25. Real Feel has us shivering at 17 degrees. And as many of you know, it snowed last night, yesterday, and it's still on the ground. And as I have said before, I joyously and wholeheartedly despise winter and snow. So I have found myself a comfy uh, rocking chair in three house to bring your fun facts to you today. I do not wish to be outside and it may be a while. I might, I might be able to manage being outside for like the first day of winter fun facts related to that. Don't hold your breath, but we'll see. I'll do my best. But anyways, I have found a nice cozy rocking chair. It's very soft. It's very comfortable sitting here at Three House to bring you today's fun facts, which by the way, speaking of holidays, are all about the upcoming holiday this weekend. It is Halloween. Yes, this is a beloved holiday by all, by mostly all. Um, my friend Kendra especially loves Halloween. And so we have a countdown going at our house and there are decorations and she loves the movie The Nightmare Before Christmas. So there is actually a candle holder of Jack's I can't say it, Skellington, okay, there we go. And, uh, you know, we carved pumpkins that squirrels have now eaten the faces off of, so they're sunken in, and parents are gonna be like, oh my gosh, why did you leave those pumpkins out for our children to see? It's fine. And people love to dress up and to celebrate this, uh, this, this holiday. And I went to a staged reading, actually, this last weekend, um, a physically distanced staged reading of Hocus Pocus, that the Student Theater Association, UNISTA, at UNI put on, and it was a lot of fun. It was really great to hear the story and, um, and see people kind of acting it out, but it was, again, a staged reading, so they were all physically distanced on the stage and keeping themselves safe and keeping the audience safe, too. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was a great event. Um, but as you enjoy Halloween this week and you enjoy candy and your favorite spooky and spoopy movies, I hope you enjoyed these fun facts as well. Fact number one, Halloween comes from a Celtic tradition. It actually started within a Celtic festival called Samhain. And that was, I think that's how you say it. I'm not exactly sure, but it's S-A-M-H-A-I-N. Samhain, Samhain, I'm not sure. Um, but it was held around the 1st of November, right? And it celebrated the final days of harvest and the crossing of spirits from one world to the other. Because as we know, um, this festival took place on All Hallows' Eve, which later became known as Halloween. But that's when the lines between the spirit world and the real world were blurred. So people um, celebrated it then to celebrate the spirits passing from one world to the next. Fact number two actually stems out of that. Costumes were worn on All Hallows' Eve to ward off those spirits. Since the lines between the spirit world and the real world were so blurred, people were worried that evil spirits would cross back over and like try to haunt them or possess them or take, um, you know, take revenge or something. And it was believed that that would happen when they wandered the earth. So costumes helped you blend in, actually, and ward off those spirits. And, I mean, they ranged from things. As I was reading and researching these, they used to have, like, big bonfires and um, sa of sacrificial bonfires to, to ward off spirits, to read each other's fortunes, and they would dress in, um, you know, like, sheepskin and wear animal heads and that sort of thing to, to really feel like they were blending in with, with the spirits. Fact number three, trick or treating started in around the 1800s, actually in America. It was adapted from European traditions, as were most things. Um, but around that time, Halloween parties also began to emerge, but they were emerging more into like community gatherings and get togethers versus, um, you know, witchcraft and pranks and ghosts, which was the original intent of Halloween is, is leading into that sort of tradition which came out of the Celtic tradition, right? And actually, parents were encouraged by religious leaders to stay away from the frightening and more grotesque aspects of costumes and Halloween traditions. And so because of that, um, 
some of the religious overtones and superstitions of Halloween actually faded towards the beginning of the 20th century. Now, we've seen that some of them come back, right? If you're superstitious or you have friends who are witches or um, practice Wicca or, or whatever um, and, and practice that, then, then you know that those superstitions are maybe a little more solid in those homes than they are in, um, in traditional Christian homes, right? When um, Christianity began to expand, that's when some of those traditions were, were adapted, but kind of simmered down a little bit. Oh, fact number four. Speaking of trick-or-treat, 25% of candy sold in the U.S. is sold during the Halloween season. Okay, so think about that for a moment. People go trick-or-treating maybe one, two nights, right? Just kind of depending on when Halloween festivals are and trick-or-treating and things. Okay, so for one to two, maybe one to three nights of fun, of trick-or-treating, 25% of all candy sold in the U.S. throughout the entire year is sold that weekend, like for that weekend, okay? And it's handed out to kids and families while they're out trick-or-treating. And if I had to go ahead and venture a guess, I would say that the majority of people buying all that candy are probably dentists because I'm betting that's how they stay in business. That's not true, but I'm just saying. It could be true. I know a lot of dentists who would probably buy candy too, but then say, also brush your teeth, floss, it's fine. <laughs> Fact number five, People are not only buying Halloween costumes for themselves or their children, they're buying costumes for their pets. In 2018, 20% of people, mostly millennials, it did say that, mostly millennials, are buying costumes for their furry friends. Now, I have a friend who loves to dress dogs up. Her favorite thing is dogs in pajamas, but she doesn't really, you know, restrict herself to that. She'll buy clothes for, for the dogs on all occasions. So, um, and she finds cute little things on sale or um, when she's ordering things for her dogs, she'll get things for mine as well. So my dog, Jack, actually has a dinosaur costume and a suit and tie, so if I ever have to go to a wedding when it's safe to do so, I have a plus one. It's very cute. Maybe I'll post a picture. And, um, oh, recently, this last weekend, actually, he got a Harry Potter um, Gryffindor robe with a tie and glasses um, at a Harry Potter-themed birthday party that my friends had for me. And he dressed up as Harry Potter. And uh, I, love, I love Ashley's enthusiasm and her love for dressing up our dogs. And I'm always happy to offer Jack up as a sacrifice. So Ashley, if you're watching this, please know that he is ready and I am ready. Oh, he also got um, bib overalls, right? And he doesn't like those as much, but uh, I think they're hilarious and super cute. So every now and then we'll dress, we'll dress him up in those as well. But my friends, those are your fun facts for the week. I hope as you are exploring um, this week and enjoying the cold but yet sunny weather, it is sunny right now, as you're enjoying the weather and you're enjoying time with your friends and family and celebrating Halloween, if that's something that your household does, I hope you enjoy these facts and can share them with others. And I hope you can join us this week tonight online for the Awakened Life, where we have conversation about um, mindfulness, resiliency, and overall taking care of our well-being. And then on Wednesday, we have our worship service, which will be streamed via Facebook and YouTube this week. We have a guest preacher, Amy Wiles, from First Presbyterian in Waterloo. We're very excited for her to join us, so tune in then as well. And we will have an upcoming service project in conjunction with Bethlehem Lutheran Church, which will happen on the 12th and 13th of November. So stay tuned for that. And if you're interested in volunteering and helping us make some tie blankets, we'd love to have you all join us. Until then, my friends, if you have any questions or anything that you need, please don't hesitate to reach out. Please feel free to contact us. We're always here for you. We are always available for meetings, for walks, for conversation, for coffee. Whatever you need, if you have any questions or anything, reach out. We'd love to hear from you. Until we do, be safe, be well, and to take care of each other. We'll talk to you very soon.